Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. On May 1st of 2022, the son spoke to the man who was jailed with Chris Watts. He said that Chris Watts tried to blame the mistress for smothering his girls and digging his wife's grave. The article states, vile Chris Watts tried to blame the callous murder of his two young daughters on his mistress. A former inmate who says he spent time with him in prison has told the son. Watts, who's 36, is currently serving five life sentences without the possibility of parole for the murders of his then-pregnant wife, Shanann, and their young daughters, Bella, four, and three-year-old Celeste. At first, Watts cynically acted the concerned husband and father when Shanann and the girls were reported missing. I just, I just want, I want everybody to just come home. Like, wherever they're at, come home. That's what I want. I just want them back. <laughs> I just, I just want them to come back. Shannon, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just, just, just come back. Like, if somebody has her, just please bring her back. I need to see everybody. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with, without anybody here. Please bring her back. After failing a polygraph test. So, um, it was completely clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. Um, he did not pass the polygraph test. Okay. Right? Okay. So now we need to talk about what actually happened. And I feel like you're probably ready to do that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph. I promise grading scale for someone who is a truth teller we would consider them to be a plus two or higher and we would consider someone to be deceptive if they were a negative four and below chris watts scored a negative 18. he failed every question on the test he admitted strangling 34 year old shanann at their home in frederick colorado but initially claimed it was her who had killed the kids on august 13 2018. Following his sentence in November 2018, Watts confessed that he smothered the girls at an oil site leased by the company he worked for. He dumped the girls' bodies in oil storage tanks after burying his wife in a shallow grave nearby. During the investigation, it was revealed that Watts had been having an affair with co-worker Nicole Kessinger and planned on starting a new life with her. Now, former inmate David Carter, who says he spent two spells with Watts in the Dodge Correctional Facility Wisconsin, has claimed the killer deflected blame for the heinous murder of his daughters by pointing the finger at Kessinger. Carter, who's 35, who says he was serving time for possession of methamphetamine and theft when he became close to Watts. He said, we were in the same unit together, Unit 11. It's for people that can't fit in with the general population and people with medical issues. He was there for his protection and I was there for psychiatric issues and for cutting myself. One day we were reading the Bible and talking about God. This was in October, 2020. I told him that I couldn't judge him for what had happened, but I'd like to know what was going on through his head. According to Carter, that's when Watts unbelievably said that in quotes, Nicole had smothered the girls with their blankets and they suffocated, end quote. Watts also claimed she helped him get the girls in the oil tanks and dig the grave for Shanann. Carter explained he wanted to start a new life with Nicole and Shanann was in the way. Chris said it made him feel sad that the girls were killed, but that one of them woke up and saw that Shanann was dead and would be a witness. Watts incredibly tried to blame Nicole for his murderous crimes, telling Carter he wasn't able to stomach killing his own kids and he said that's why Nicole killed them. To prove that the two know each other and have remained in touch, Carter showed the son a letter that he claims Watts sent to him. The handwriting appears to match that of others that Watts sent to writer Sherilyn Cadle, who penned the book Letters from Christopher about her communications with the killer. Nicole Kessinger took new identity and moved away from her home in Arvada, Colorado after Watts was arrested. She told police during their investigation that Watts had lied, that he was separated from his wife and planned to divorce her, and she believed him. According to her web browsing history, reportedly released in docs by Weld County District Attorney's Office shortly after they began their affair in July of 2018. Kessinger searched the phrase, man I'm having an affair with says he will leave his wife. On August 4th, she spent two hours searching Google for wedding dresses before looking up topics related to marrying your mistress on August 8th, according to the documents reportedly released by the DA. Kessinger said Watts would pay for dates with gift cards, but on their last date, 
On August 11, 2018, she noticed that he was using a personal credit card. She told cops it was like he had nothing to hide or nothing to lose. After she heard the news of his family's disappearance, Kessinger said she texted Watts demanding to know if he was involved. Writing to her just hours after brutally wiping out his family, she said Watts responded, I didn't hurt my family, Nikki. She said that those were the last texts they exchanged before Watts was arrested on August 15, 2018. Carter, who currently works at a fast food restaurant, says that Watts told him that Kessinger had written to him while in prison using her new name. There's no suggestion she was truly involved in the Watts crimes in any way. In his correspondence with author Sherilyn Cato, Watts in fact revealed that he knew the day before the murders that he was going to kill his daughters. He wrote August 12th, when I finished putting the girls to bed, I walked away and said that this is the last time I'm going to be tucking my babies in. I knew what was going to happen the day before and I did nothing to stop it. Asked how he had reacted when Watts made the claims about Kessinger, Carter said, I was shocked. I didn't know what to think. Knowing that Chris Watts is a pathological liar, but there are always some truths within the lies. He either told Carter this as a lie in a new confession when he had been covering this story to protect his mistress, so to say, or simply lied to Carter. Whether Carter is lying or not is interesting because if Chris really did tell him that, he's actually exposing the confession. Or if he didn't tell him that, then he's just simply lying to the media. But either way, we know there are a lot of discrepancies with the timeline of the mistress. And since a full investigation was never completed, we will probably never find out. This was one of the worst, if not the worst, cases I've ever had in 19 years of police work. This one does not make sense to me. We were preparing for a murder trial, and a murder trial that was going to last years. And all of a sudden, I receive a phone call from Detective Baumover, and he said, hey, Chris is going to plead guilty to all charges. Whoa, wait, like, we're not done. We have all these things to do. We didn't examine all the evidence. We didn't interview every witness we needed to. We didn't do all of these things that you would do in a normal investigation because he stopped the clock. We were relieved that it was going to be over, but at the same time, we felt like, in a sense, we didn't finish. While we got some satisfaction with the fact that we knew that he would never have the opportunity to hurt anyone else again, we were all left with the fact that the story was not over. The ping alone at 6 a.m. in the morning from the mistress near Watts' house is the only evidence of her possibly somehow being involved. So if that's the case, if she wasn't involved, where's the evidence proving that she wasn't? We've never seen her time card. They've never posted any photos of those. I mean, that is a simple request. And it was stated that she never even clocked in. She only clocked out. So that just leaves more room for suspicion, correct? All they have to show is the geodata from her phone that day. It's that simple. You put that out to the world, all of the suspicion goes away. But no one has yet to do that. Hi. <laughs> it's me. I miss your face. I was just calling to say hi. Call me back. Bye. Hi. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I guess just call me back when you have a chance. Bye.